Hello everybody, my name is Miss Nickerson and today I'm going to show you how to use Edpuzzle in the classroom. So Edpuzzle is a great tool that can be used for differentiation or your direct instruction. What it does is it takes any YouTube video or any video that you create and you can embed questions along the way. So today I'm gonna to show you the editing process and how to do that with a video that I actually created on my own. I'm also gonna show you how to look at their discovery library to find videos that are already pre-made with questions. So to begin, I'm going to log into Edpuzzle with my Google credentials and get started. So when I click log in, I'm gonna let it know that I'm a teacher and I'm just gonna simply log in with Google. Click my info. And just like that, I am logged into Edpuzzle and I'm ready to go. Edpuzzle also works with Google Classroom so that you can import classes and not have to worry about adding students individually. So it's super powerful and nice. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna give you a tour and then I'm gonna show you how to edit your own videos. So Edpuzzle automatically brings you to the Discover Library and within the Discover Library, you can search in your community, you can search at your school and you can search YouTube. So the community is just videos that you can filter by subject, grade level, uh, the country that you're in or the source. So either an Edpuzzle video or a video from YouTube. So Edpuzzle is currently in the works of creating their own um, curriculum for teachers to use. So that's the difference, either a YouTube video or an Edpuzzle video. If you go to my school, you can see other teachers within your district or within your school site and videos that they have created. So this is really powerful that you are not reinventing the wheel, that you can just take another teacher or if you are departmentalized or if you have a teacher who's very passionate about a subject and says, hey, I wanna make a video for math, you can simply take their video and assign it to kids. You can edit it if you want to as well, and then you are working smarter and definitely not harder. If you click on the YouTube section, you can filter out by different educational channels such as Khan Academy, Nat Geo, TED Talks, um, all of those types of videos. I know for me personally, I use Crash Course in high school, so it's awesome if you are a high school teacher that you can assign a video on a subject and embed questions along the way. I'm currently working on a third, it's a standard that's a third grade standard um, for area and perimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to import my own video. So I'm not gonna use any of these right now. But if I wanted to, I could just find one of these videos and add my own questions. So there's also the Edpuzzle Originals like I was talking about where you can filter through different subject areas. Under my content, these are all videos that I can see I've created in the past for students. So that's what the my content is. Um, for my classes, here I can click the plus, but plus button and I can import with whatever my LMS is. So for my district, we use Google Classroom. You may have Canvas or Schoology, Clever, all of those popular ones, and you can easily connect your class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect with a class that I'm working with right now. So I'm gonna pick Google Classroom. And I'm picking the class. This is a seventh grade class and I'm helping them with, I'm gonna say technology, even though it's a math standard. So now my class is imported and I can see that on the left side here. I can also see all of my archived classes if I wanna see past videos that I've assigned. So now that I'm in this class, um, I'm going to add some content. So in the top right corner, I'm gonna click add content. So you could use their discovery library to try to find a video or you could upload a video of your own, which is what I'm gonna do today. You could start recording directly on Edpuzzle or you can have a student project. So if you assign students a student project, you could have them create their own video and create their own questions. And then you can actually take that video and assign it to a class. So talk about empowering your students, right? So right now I'm just going to upload my own video. So I actually took a screen recording the other day of myself teaching a lesson. So I'm going to choose that file because it's saved to my downloads. And I believe it was this one. 
And so here it's just going to upload really quickly. So now that it's upload, I'm able to go in and add different question types. And it's really important to note that on Edpuzzle, you don't necessarily just need to have multiple choice questions. You can also have short answer. You can uh, leave a note for your students so they're not even answering something. If you just want to pinpoint something like, hey, really pay attention to this part because they're going to give you a formula that you should take note of, you can just leave a note so that your students know to acknowledge the note and then move on. Also, while they're within Edpuzzle, if they go to a different tab, the Edpuzzle video will stop. So it's really good that you as the teacher know my kid actually had to pay attention to get through the whole video. The other thing that I really love about using Edpuzzle is the immediate feedback. So if you do include multiple choice questions, the students see right away because you pick the right and wrong answers so they can see what the right answer was and if they got it right or wrong immediately. And so they get immediate feedback and you as a teacher will see, you can see on the teacher end which questions they're missing or getting correct. So one use case for Edpuzzle that was really useful is within my district, a teacher was using it for um, one of the ELA lessons where somebody had already uploaded a YouTube video of them reading the whole chapter of the unit. And so they read the unit lesson and included all the comprehension questions along the way. And that teacher, when students were doing this ed puzzle in small groups, was able to see, oh my gosh, all my students are missing question number four. Why, what's going on? We need to have an intervention. So I'm gonna uh, you know, monitor and adjust as a teacher and go back to teach that question um, so that students have a better understanding because I can see that a lot of them are not understanding the information. Now that my video is all uploaded to Edpuzzle, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. So this is a longer video and what I'm going to do here is I am going to add in some question types. So here you can see assign. So after I edit it and create everything that I want to, I'm going to assign it to my class, um, my Google Classroom class. For right now, I'm going to edit this video. So. In here you have an editor where you can cut parts of your video, you can also do a voiceover if you want, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add question types. So it will prompt you with three different question types that you can have. You can have a multiple choice question, an open-ended question, or a note. Now it's important to note that with the open-ended question, it won't give students immediate feedback of whether their answer was right or wrong. You as the teacher are going to have to go back and read responses, so keep that in mind as you are creating these videos. So I'm going to choose multiple choice questions. For this video in particular, I just want it to be a knowledge check before students move on to a performance task. So I'm going to give them multiple multiple choice questions and they're going to get all their questions right before they move on to the performance task. So you can type your question here. So I'm going to say, what is the formula for perimeter? Actually, I'm going to say, what is the formula for area? And then for my question types, I could say length times width, which is the correct answer that I explain in the video here. I can put add all the sides to make sure that they know the difference between area and perimeter because that would be perimeter. Um, you only have to have two answers, or you could add another one. So I'm going to make up a random one, multiply all the sides, and hopefully they know that this is the correct answer. So to mark a question wrong, you put the X. To mark it right, you check the green check mark. Um, also within here, you can bold, italicize, underline. You can include exponents. Um, so for math questions, that would be really helpful. You can include a link. And you can also include an image. So if you wanted to say which one of these is an isosceles triangle, you could import images of all different types of triangles. Um, so those are all really nice to have another thing that you could do is insert an equation for more math problems it's very friendly with math and then you can also choose to give students um, feedback so if they get the answer right I could say great job and once they select that answer they'll see my feedback um, they can also see if I say if they click add all the sides I can give feedback and say that is how to find perimeter um, Remember, the question is asking about area. 
And so if students select that answer, then that's the feedback that they're going to get. So it's really nice to give students that immediate feedback. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I scroll to the correct part in the video. So within my video, I don't want to ask the question until we get to the appropriate time because if I start with that question, they haven't watched the video to see their correct answer. So I talk about area in this um, section of the video. So at four minutes, I'm going to include this question. So I'm going to click save. So now students at four minutes will be stopped in the video and prompted to answer the question. And so it, the question will appear like this, what is the formula for area? And then they have to click the right answer and it shows the feedback that they will get when they click the right answer or this answer. So then once they get the correct answer, they can click continue and continue watching the video. So I'm gonna add some more questions and then I'll come back and show you my finished ed puzzle. So I just finished creating all of my different question types for this ed puzzle and I wanted to kind of give you a tour of what it's going to look like for the students. So as students watch, when they reach each of these water drop looking icons, that is where they have an ed puzzle question to answer before they can move on. So this first question is a multiple choice question. We went over this together already. They're going to show me that they know the formula for areas, length times width, and then they can keep watching. My next question was another multiple choice one. I wanted to make sure that they were watching to see the answer. Um, it's already on the screen as they're answering the question. Um, also, before each question, students can go back to the previous question and start watching from there. So then when they finish this question, their next question is gonna be at six minutes and it's gonna be, what is perimeter? Then I added a note with a voice message for students. So while you guys are watching, So I really want to ingrain that in students because as I was teaching them last week, I noticed that they weren't understanding the concept that perimeter you add and with multiplication or with area you multiply. So I really want to make sure my students know that. So I added a written note, but I also added an audio note to personalize it and for students who may have any difficulty reading if I am teaching a lower grade level. Once I get to my next question, I just ask what does congruent mean because that's some new vocabulary for them that I explained within the video. And then my last question here actually isn't a question, it's another note. And I just said, when you finish this video, come see me to get graph paper and other materials for the performance assessment that we are gonna um, do together. So now that I have all of my questions in there that I would like, I am going to click finish because I'm done with this video. So now that I have clicked finish, I can see that at three minutes, 50 seconds, they're gonna have a multiple choice. I can see uh, all of the events that are gonna happen throughout this video. I can also assign it now to my uh, Google Classroom that I would like to assign it to. I could make further edits to it. Other people can also view this video and make their own edits to it since I have it on public right now. I could make it private so that nobody else can see it, but I want to spread the wealth and let other teachers use it if they want to. If you want to be a little bit more organized, you can move it to a folder as well. So what I'm going to do right now is I've already edited this video. It's ready to go, so I'm going to assign it. So this is the Google Classroom class that I would like to assign it to. The start day is going to be tomorrow because tomorrow they're going to be learning it. I'm not going to set a due date right now, and then this is really important, you want to make sure prevent skipping is on because otherwise students can jump from question to question without watching your video. So maybe it's a review video where you really don't care if they do skip ahead because if they already know the material, great, you just want to check in, but I'm going to prevent skipping because I really want to make sure my students are watching this video the whole way through. Um, I'm not going to post it on Google Classroom yet because this is something I'm doing with middle schoolers where if I post it to Google Classroom, they're probably going to see it right away and start working on it and I want to explain it in person to them. 
if this were an elementary class or if I were about to start class with these students, I would post it to Google Classroom and it would be right there. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assign it to the class and I will tell them to go to Google Classroom and I'll post the link myself so that I don't cause any confusion. So I'm going to assign it. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna show me all of the kids' names and tell me when they last watched it, if they turned it in, and what grade they got. So as students are finishing this video, um, as they're watching it, I can see their answers coming across and see what they're getting right, what they're getting wrong. Another option that's very cool with Edpuzzle is you can go on live mode. And when you click live mode, you as the teacher project the video and play and students on their own, own end will answer the questions. So that way you can do it live all together. In a small group, I think it's more powerful to have the kids do it on their own and they can work at their own pace. But if this was something that you want to do live, that's also a great way to do it as well. And then up here, you just have the option to edit the video further if you want to or to view it as a student. So from the student's end, it's going to look like this with all of the questions along the way. And then whenever you do decide that you want to post it on Google Classroom, you can just come back and click post on Google Classroom. And that's how all of your students can access your Edpuzzle video and get started. So Edpuzzle is a very powerful tool where I can go create my own content for students. I can check in with them to differentiate and see where students are struggling and pull them back in either a one-on-one -on -one case, um, small groups, or maybe whole group. I noticed the whole class is not getting area right, so we need to go back and have a lesson on that. Also in the Discover tab, remember that you can already find pre-made videos if you are struggling on time or if you want to find something fast or if you already know that you're going to teach a Khan Academy video maybe you can find a Khan Academy video that already has questions done and there's your small group for the day and it's super easy so when I'm through this discovery catalog it will tell me the name of the teacher who created it how long the video is and how many questions are along the way and so if I decided that I wanted to teach this brain pop on climate change I could just go in here and I could edit to create my own questions if I go through and I don't really like those questions or I could just quickly assign it to my own class so I always like to edit to create my own copy um, because if you assign it, I believe the answers could go to that other teacher and I wanna see my students' answers. So make sure you either make a copy or edit it and include all the questions that you wanna have. You could personalize it with those notes, um, any way that you wanna do it. But that is a super quick way to assign an Edpuzzle. And I just noticed looking at this one, it doesn't have any questions. So I definitely wanna edit and add questions along the way for my students. So that is how to use Edpuzzle, and I am so excited that you all sat down and learned this, and I can't wait to see what your students are capable of in Edpuzzle.